With all due respect, your best guess is still just a guess. We need to have faith in the possibility of good. Wait, hold on. His oxygen consumption's going up. I think he's alive. He's conscious. Hey, go steady down there. You've been out for a couple weeks. Fifteen days, in fact. They thought you were dead. If it wasn't for your life suit, you probably would be. Listen, there's been a complication. We can't link into your POV camera, and it looks like communications are only working one way. You can hear me, I hope, but I can't hear you. That means we don't know how badly you were affected by the transportation. If you're feeling confused or disoriented, you should know that deep space travel can do you pretty serious psychological damage. Especially to your memory. Even a few hours out there in the dark can cause permanent problems. I'm gonna be honest with you. Mission controller concerned you might have no idea who you are or why you're in there. If that's true, I have some difficult facts for you. You're a long way from Earth. A very long way. But every single person on the planet is depending on you. That thing you're inside right now, whatever it is, is gonna hit Earth in the next few hours. And if it does, that's the end of everything. You need to decipher and dismantle it from the inside before that happens. I just hope you haven't forgotten how. We all do. Now listen carefully. This is important. The reason why it's me talking to you and not mission control is because you're too far out into deep space. Their signal can't reach you out there, but mine can. I'm Commander Novak. I'm an astronaut on board the International Space Station. I'm gonna relay everything they tell me, but the bad news is, every time I orbit around the far side of the Earth, I'll move out of radio range. When that happens, you're gonna be on your own for a while. Just stay calm, and keep your head straight until I get back into range. Okay, this is it. I'm orbiting out of range now. I'll be back soon. Just remember what I've told you. And believe it. Okay, well, hello. This is the sick vlog. I'm very sick, coughing, etc., 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 etc. So, my voice is even hoarser than normal. But the lady that's speaking in the beginning sounds just like my old roommate. And her story is we worked together at a, a slaughterhouse in the hot section. Not doing the actual killing. This was 10, 11 years ago. <coughs> wow. That far, far away. But um, just seems like yesterday. Oh, and the mouse is... These mice are terrorizing me. They like to come up by the PlayStation. <coughs> Not PlayStation, the Xbox. Because it gets so hot. Maybe that's why. And they just walk around there. It's like, uh, can you go away? We can coexist if you're not pooping on my things. And you're not startling me. Because <coughs> I raised rats. But anyways, the lady in the beginning sounds like my old roommate, and I'll call her Rodney Dangerfield Jr., which was her nickname. And she kind of had buggy eyes, and cause she kind of did movements like Rodney Dangerfield. And uh, she was a self-hating lesbian, at least at work. She get all puffed out, and, you know, Standing there, clearly being a little bit masculine, saying, Oh, people tried to hang that gay shit on me. And I say, I ain't no fucking derogatory term for gay people. It's like, jeez. It's one thing to be in the closet, but to spread hate about, uh, You know, people that are similar to you. It's kind of... 
really screwed up. <coughs> so anyway, she was uh, she was working one section. We I was the only feminine white girl on our uh, in our area in the hot area on our shift. The other two were masculine. I think I think she was actually she was sometimes bisexual because sometimes she would try to get people to get one of the managers to sleep with her. She'd say, I'll give you give you some gold chains and and if you can get him to sleep with me because oh he's just so beautiful it's like okay and uh <clears throat> apparently she didn't get him but she got a kind of a nerdy and nerdy isn't bad but he was not very attractive and he you know, lived with his mom, he was nice and everything, but, you know, she was after a manager that was so good looking, and then she ended up sleeping with a, our co-worker that was a, uh, a very strange pick, but, uh, yeah, then I ended up not working there because they had uh, fired me when they told me to go get a doctor's note. And I was waiting for the doctor's appointment, calling in every day, like they said. But they saw you walked off the job, and I said, No, you guys sent me home. No, we don't have records of that. So for two weeks, is the Twilight Zone saying, I was in health services. You guys sent me to get a doctor's note because I just had some operations, you know, three operations within nine months, and uh, and it was very hot, and the fan wasn't working where they had moved me, and uh, <clears throat> and so I felt a little dizzy. Oh, you need doctor's note. It's like, no, oh, can I just sit down? maybe where there's air can you put a fan in there can you get that fan working that might help but no go get a doctor's note it's like uh, okay and uh, <coughs> so anyways I fought and got my job back and then they sent me two or three weeks later for another doctor's note a guy hit my car it took <coughs> Excuse me. It took over the uh, two weeks vacation and the personal days that I had. So they're like, haha, now we can fire you. And then they tried to say they didn't fire me. I quit. She doesn't get unemployment. But then they didn't show up at the hearing. And so I won it. <coughs> So anyways, I kept in touch with Rodney Dangerfield Jr. on uh, MySpace, and then I had a bad relationship with a sociopath, uh, Vulture Face, and I needed to get away, so I went and moved in, but then her girlfriend, because she finally admitted that she was gay, it's like, uh, not a big deal, everybody knew it anyway. Um, she didn't want me staying there, so after two weeks, I had to grovel and go back with Vulture Face until the lease ran out, like a month later. But uh, he didn't. He had to hide it from his his mother and the uh, Horse Face, the woman that his mother set him up with, while we were living together. Because uh, he didn't want them to know that I was there. And, oh, that's a big another story. Staying there, that was a nightmare. Um, 
So anyways, but then I got some school money for going to college and she was having trouble paying things. And so she was going to let me rent a room in her condo if I paid in advance. So I'm like, fine, I like doing that anyway. Then I don't have to worry. So I paid for six months in advance. Because I'd like, you know, that will help you. That payment can, you know, maybe help you save your place, you know, while you're trying to find another job. And so I went there. But, oh, man, I didn't know what a nightmare she was. She is the opposite of what I have. She has Graves' disease. And she drank, like, a pot of coffee. And she was, oh, my God. So high strung she would literally just talk all day I would have to pretend like I was sleeping to horror movies or something in my room um, in order to make her not try to get me to respond to anything she was saying even though she's more just talking at me just complaining about the same thing about her girlfriend, and about their family, her family, that her stepson, you know, how she wanted to, you know, she got so mad at her stepson, she wanted to smear his blood all over the walls. I'm like, oh, God. And then towards the end, she'd get pissed at me. She couldn't find a power cord. Oh, my God. And I recorded some of this. She couldn't find a power cord for her laptop, and I didn't have a laptop at the time. I had a desktop. So she's like, she didn't talk to me, she'd leave notes. Put my fucking power cord back where you found it, or I'm going to call the police. I have a picture of it somewhere. Um, how dare you touch my power cord? You know, put it back. And Sharpie, I do it on the fridge, and I'm like, <coughs> excuse me, and, uh, and then I would talk to her, I'm like, what the hell, I don't have your damn power cord, I don't need a power cord, it's my expensive power cord, you don't have a right to take it, I said, I don't need a power cord, I don't have a laptop, why would I want your power cord? Oh, I don't know, but it was up there. It was up there, and then when I come home, it's gone. I'm like, well, maybe you put it somewhere else. I said, you're kind of crazy. So who knows what you did? And she's like, uh, and I bet you messed up that room. I bet it's all fucked up. I'm like, what? Why do you why do you think the room that I'm staying in is all fucked up? It's like why would you say something like that out of the blue? I've given no indication at all that the room is fucked up. And uh so anyways, yeah, it's crazy she'd just talk at my door. She'd talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and then she'd be like I don't have any friends. I wish I had someone to talk to. I'm like, bitch, what do you think you're doing to me? You're at my door every time you're home. You're like blah, 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 at the door all the time. And I, it's like I would be yelling at her through the door sometimes. Be like, oh yeah, that's horrible. So, you know, because eh. I, I thought that she was expecting me to say something, but Apparently not. Because at the end, and I have this, these recorded, because uh, I'd record them because I was afraid of her because she would talk about, yeah, yeah, and he, he disrespected me too. Yeah, I don't have no problem with blood all over the walls. Yeah, go ahead. Do that. And she's just, just talking to herself crazy shit. And she was obsessed with my ex that came to fix her. Um, Stephanie was my ex at the time, but kind of a friend, like a 
perverted stepbrother that was a little crazy that wouldn't leave you alone yeah that's what he was like and uh, she was obsessed with him it's like uh, I thought you were gay oh but oh god he's so beautiful but then he'd come over and she'd sit on the couch because she's pissed off about something she's always pissed off and she would just instead of saying hi to him she would sit there and look like she wanted to kill everybody I'm like oh, okay you know towards the end I I got tired of her shit and there's a video of uh, me yelling at her saying you know what you don't even thank anyone you know my ex doesn't even know you and he came over to help and you didn't even thank him and she'd act like it was my responsibility to give her rides like if she broke down or something or her leg hurt well, you know I had this to do I'm like I'm not your personal planner I'm not your girlfriend I don't keep track of your schedule I'm trying to do things myself and uh and she, oh well if you're a friend I wouldn't even have to ask you it's like you know what I let you borrow my phone when you were being a security guard and you're afraid at a college to go without a phone because yours got turned off and uh, I picked you up at 3 in the morning going through dangerous parts of Denver like uh, what is that I, I don't remember the name but there's one area that's supposed to be really bad and uh, you know, I get lost a lot, and I didn't have a phone with GPS back then. And uh, is, I think it's is it Four Corners or something like that. I don't know. Um, yeah, so that was just crazy. So this, this voice, this lady that pops up and talks, sounds just like her. She ended up losing her place anyway, and then moving away and where did I go oh I, I rented a room for my for my ex again which is another story and another nightmare my ex not vulture face another ex an Italian octopus but anyways this is cube director's cut part one thank you like and subscribe and I will see you later sorry for the coughing